This presentation is intended to assist the viewer in understanding the results of the investigation undertaken by the Independent Technical Review Board, ITRB, into the cause of the slump in the southern wall of the Cadia Northern Tailing Storage Facility, which occurred on March 9, 2018. It should be reviewed in conjunction with the full ITRB report. Nothing in this presentation is intended to assign fault or responsibility to any person or party, nor is it to evaluate whether the slump could have been foreseen or prevented. Cadia Valley Operations, or CVO, is a gold and copper mining and processing complex located 25 kilometres south of the town of Orange in central west New South Wales. Mining commenced in 1998 out of the Cadia Hill open pit. Currently, ore is extracted by underground mining, block cave mining and panel cave mining. Once extracted, the ore is crushed, ground and processed to produce a gold-rich copper concentrate and gold ore. The unrecoverable and uneconomical byproduct of this ore processing is called tailings. These tailings are pumped as a slurry to final storage areas called tailings storage facilities, or TSFs. At the time of the Northern Tailing Storage Facility embankment failure, there were two operational TSFs at CVO. The Northern TSF, the NTSF, and the Southern TSF, the STSF. On the morning of March 9, 2018, prominent cracks in the south face of the NTSF were discovered by site personnel, completing routine maintenance on instrumentation in the embankment. Senior site personnel inspected the cracks and identified further cracks as they developed throughout the day. Significant ground heave was also detected at the toe of the NTSF, adjacent to the cracks observed higher up. This prompted an evacuation of all workers south of the NTSF southern wall, including the STSF work area and the two downstream residences. Site personnel returned to the NTSF in the late afternoon to monitor the cracks and found a 300-metre section of the wall had failed into the STSF. Morphologically, this movement can be classified as a mobile slump. The impacts of the event were relatively minor as the tailings released were captured in the STSF. Initial construction of the NTSF embankment commenced in August 1997 to a height of 50 metres. This starter dam comprised of a sloping clay core supported by rock fill shoulders with side slopes of 1.5 horizontal to 1 vertical. In general, the shoulders of the embankment were designed to be founded on hard clay or extremely weathered rock. Geotechnical investigations for the NTSF were completed prior to the commencement of construction. These investigations comprised drill holes and test pits and a spacing typical for a dam of this height. The foundation geology of the NTSF was found to be complex. The dam is mostly founded on volcanic rocks that are 450 million years old, called the Forest Reef Volcanics. This rock is overlain by younger basalt lava flows that form the capping to ridges along the western side of the NTSF. As tailings accumulated in the NTSF, it was necessary to raise the embankment in stages. In total, the NTSF has been raised 11 times, with the most recent being Stage 10, which commenced in 2017 and was mostly complete at the time of the slump. Stage 2 was built progressively between 2000 and 2003 by the downstream method, in which fill was added downstream of the dam's crest. Stage 2 comprised a zoned earth and rock fill embankment with a 5-metre-wide sloping core. Stage 3 of the NTSF was constructed in 2005 by the centerline method. With centerline construction, the dam was raised to sit mostly on the crest of the dam, with the upstream shoulder sitting on tailings. From 2008, construction transitioned to the upstream method. The upstream method of construction is where most of the rays is founded on tailings, and the raises form a relatively thin shell which contains the tailings. Where the embankment was constructed over tailings, a rock fill working platform was provided. The initial upstream construction stages were 4.5 and 6 metres high, but subsequently reverted to a consistent height of 3 metres. A cross-section through the embankment at the slump location shows us the construction history thus far. At this location, the foundation geology consists of weathered and fresh forest reef volcanics. Basalt that is present along the western ridge of the NTSF was not present at the slump location. 
having most likely been removed by erosion. Investigations following the NTSF slump identified that the top layer of the forest reef volcanics was extremely weathered, relatively weak, highly compressible, and strain weakening. Strain weakening or brittle behavior in a material is characterized by an often rapid loss of shear strength when loaded past its peak strength. This layer is referred to as Forest Reef Volcanics Unit A, and its depiction in the cross section is not shown to scale. When compared with the underlying Forest Reef Volcanics, Unit A has a much lower density. The location and size of Unit A was not identified in the original geotechnical investigations, as it had either been removed by erosion or was covered by basalt in other areas of the dam foundation. Analysis following the failure has shown that due to the height of the dam in the latter stages of the embankment construction, it had been loaded close to its peak strength. Due to the strain weakening behavior of Unit A foundation soils, part of the foundation had begun to deform and lose its strength. This zone where the strength is reducing is illustrated by yellow. As part of the Stage 10 design, further investigation of the tailings deposited in the NTSF had been undertaken using cone penetration testing and sampling. These investigations showed that the tailings were weaker than previous investigations had indicated. In response, it was decided to improve the stability of the NTSF embankment by adding two buttresses to the downstream face. An upper buttress, known as Buttress 1, was intended to stabilize the upstream raised portion of the embankment, and a lower buttress, Buttress 2, was intended to stabilize the overall stability of the embankment. Prior to the construction of Buttress 2, it was necessary to prepare a suitable foundation to support the buttress. In the vicinity of the slump, this required the removal of tailings that had accumulated in the depression, together with a small amount of softened soil. The upper buttress, Buttress 1, was built first and was generally constructed from the west to the east. As construction progressed, the buttress progressively added further load to the foundations. Construction of the lower buttress, Buttress 2, followed ground preparation as required. At the time of the slump, Buttress 2 had been partially constructed to the east of the slump, but had not commenced in the immediate vicinity of the slump. As can be seen, the load imposed by the construction of Buttress 1 progressively loaded the foundation materials and resulted in the zone of overstressing and strength reduction that had begun to form in the weaker Unit A material, extending further beneath the embankment. This reduced the overall strength of the foundation and is known as progressive failure. The reduction in foundation strength resulted in the NTSF embankment moving forward slowly, something that initially was not observable to the naked eye. This movement eventually resulted in cracking that extended through the tailings to the crest of Buttress 1, where it was observed by site personnel on the morning of the failure. Computer modeling shows the development of a highly stressed zone extending through the tailings to the location where it was observed on the NTSF embankment. Three-dimensional computer modeling also shows how the forward movement of the embankment was concentrated in the area that subsequently developed into the slump. This appears as the red zone on the 3D model. The tailings contained in the NTSF are loose, saturated and contractive, which means that they are susceptible to liquefaction. Liquefaction of a soil occurs when loading is sufficiently fast that water pressures generated in the soil as a result of the loading cannot drain. This results in a rapid loss of strength with the soil behaving as a liquid. On the morning of March 9, 2018, the NTSF was in a fragile condition. The lateral support provided to the tailings by the Stages 1 and 2 embankment had been reduced. The removal of this support was sufficiently quick that the tailings liquefied. The commencement of liquefaction can be seen in the red and orange zones in the computer modeling. Liquefaction of the tailings resulted in a loss of support for the upstream raised sections of the NTSF. The liquefied tailings and collapsed upstream raised sections of the embankment resulted in a substantial increase in the driving force behind the embankment. This overcame any remnant resistance in the already weakened embankment foundations, propelling the embankment forward and moving the toe of rock fill some 170 meters into the STSF.